Hi. In this course, we're not only playing games, we're also making them. So one of the tools that you get to, to use for this is Twine. Twine is a game engine, and a game engine is quite simply a piece of software that allows you to make games with. So there's very involved game engines like Unity or Unreal Engine, or there's very simple ones, for example, like RPG Maker. Twine veers towards the very simple, but one of the things that I really like about it is that you can also take it to be something very complex and deep. You can make quite complex and deep games with Twine. Um, one of the other things that I really like to do with Twine, that we really like to do with Twine, is we like to tell interactive histories with it. Um, so I'm going to show you sort of what that means in this very short uh, lecture, as well as take you through some of the very basics of Twine. You're hiking in Snake Canyon when you find yourself lost in a strange, dimly lit cave of time. Gradually, you can make out two passageways. One curves downward to the right, the other leads upwards to the left. It occurs to you that the one leading down may go to the past, and the one leading up may go to the future. Which way will you choose? If you take the left, br left branch, turn to page 20. If you take the right branch, turn to page 6. If you walk outside the cave, Turn to page two. This is the very first page of the book called The Cave of Time. It is the very first also of a series called Choose Your Own Adventure. So this was a series of very um, uh, quite influential and well-known novels in which you quite literally got to read a book, but also at the same time choose your own way through it. It was quite a revolutionary thing uh, for, for the time, right? We're talking here a 70s uh, when this was first published. Books like The Cave of Time, and many others like them, are examples of interactive narratives. They're a narrative with which you have to interact in, further, uh, in order to propel the plot. Twine is very much like that. It is, uh, to be very formal about it, it is hypertext storytelling. So it is storytelling by allowing your player to click on links. For example, in this particular uh, intro to uh, this twine that we recently did, A Fair Day, and I'll link to the making of that. It was a two-hour uh, speed run of making a twine um, in the description of this video. Uh, there's a couple of choices in there, and those choices are demarcated, in this case, by blue links. If you click on them, they'll take you to another passage. That really is what Twine is about at its core. This type of interactive storytelling has its roots in reader involvement. The, the idea that, as an author, you get to involve your readership through reading your text. Um, generally speaking, the very first um, text that did this was The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy. At least, that's what the people who have studied these things uh, tell me. And uh, this particular book by Lauren Stern from 1759, well, it's, a com it's a comedy and it's uh, notable because it's supposedly about the life, but actually it's a lot of opinions and it's a very garbled sort of uh, structure where if you want to read through it and understand it as a reader, you'll have to really do a lot of work yourself in order to be able to connect all the dots in it. So that's one example of an author, a very early one, of an author really asking, um, in this case, his readership to, to really work with the text. Well, choose your own adventures are, as I just ex exemplified, are another version of that. And... Um, this, as you may remember also from uh, the Hammurabi text, text-driven games were really the very first games out there. Narrative, not necessarily narrative-driven games, but text-driven games were the ones that were not the very, the very first games, but they were the games that were available for a larger audience. For example, like Hammurabi or the Sumer game that I talked about in the previous lecture. And these really were very important in the 70s and 80s and afterwards as games became video games so very much visually focused as well text became maybe a little bit less uh, important but at the same time it is still very much part of storytelling in games right the vast majority of games uses some form of text often interactively so to tell their stories and very much in the genre of text narrative driven video games um, that's still very much the case your RPGs 
or in fact uh, the game that we'll be playing for the Let's Play in this course, 80 Days. Twine and its hypertext stories are therefore within that general uh, tradition. But if you're really going to deep, deep into it, there's different imp important differences between all of them. But think of it all as a way of interactively telling your story with your players. If you really want to get into this, I definitely recommend reading the blogs by Emily Short, who is a well-known figure in the interactive fiction uh, world. So what history telling with Twine allows us to do is it allows us to do different things. Hit research, so you can actually research the past by interactively engaging with it through text, but also very much teaching about it and particularly doing outreach, right, for this large, you can make a fun game out of it, but you can also make a game that is not only, not only fun, quote unquote, but there's also something that you can engender some learning through for a larger audience. But the nice thing is that it's not just a, a linear text, right? So you can do things that you cannot do, for example, if you're uh, communicating to an audience through a linear text, whether that's an article, an essay, or, you know, a fun piece in a local newspaper. Because, for example, what Twine allows the player to do is to interact with that history that you want to present to them. For example, making their own what if this happened history, right? It's a very important and popular form of history telling. The idea that maybe things could have happened differently in the past. Changing, changing history as we know it. The idea, once again, of time traveling, of course, something that Sibyl also talked about in this course. But also non-linear histories, right? Often when we have to talk about history, we have to do it in a sequential way. But, as already was uh, explained in the Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy, that is not necessarily the case if you ask a bit more of your players or of your readership. Also, it allows you to go at history from different perspectives. For example, you can pick up different player character perspectives. That, or you can also do historical linking. Right? You can do the linking of particular um, events or all sorts of other things. And just in general, of course, one thing you can make with it is a fun experience for people to engage with the past through. So... Twine is available, uh, Twine 2 particularly, is available at twinery.org. It's an open source tool, so it means basically that if you want to do anything with it, you can for free, you can just mod uh, modify it to your heart's content for telling interactive non-linear stories in HTML format. It is very much, as I said, easy to pick up, but also surprisingly deep. It was created in 2009 by Chris Klimas, who actually used it first as a research tool for sort of making hypertext documents uh, for himself, but then some found out that there was this larger community out there that was actually lo looking for a tool like this to write interactive fiction with. Um, now it's maintained by a lot of different people, so not only Chris is working on it anymore. And there are a lot of great twines out there that you can start playing right now. So if you want to get a bit of inspiration, for example, or just want to play a couple of good games. If you go to itch.io and you look for the tag, the tag twine, then you'll find a lot of different twine games. But enough about twine and its theory. Let's delve into the uh, bit of twinery itself. So uh, this is Twine. At least this is Twine's web page. This is where you can get it. So you can use Twine online or you can download it. In both ways, it will work, mm, well, actually completely the same, but it will also work with the same tools. It will work with your browser mostly. And uh, there's one very important thing that I'm going to say right at the start. If you're working with Twine, it saves your stories in your browser, in the cookies that are part of your browser. So if you're one of those people, for whatever reason, uh, who deletes their, their cookies on a regular occasion, then it also means you're deleting your stories. So what you want to do is also, ma also always make sure that you carefully back them up because they're stored in your browser. That's maybe after just, you know, typing in passages, that's the most important thing to understand when you work with Twine for the first time. All right, we're just gonna use it online for now. I already have a test story here, but I'm gonna briefly uh, be making another one. So to do that, I simply press story over here. I'm gonna say, there we go, first story. Sorry if my keyboard is very loud, but it's a mechanical keyboard, I just like those. So this is what you'll see when you make any sort of story in Twine. This is at least the start of it. It will become much more complex and um, uh, multi-branched later on. This means that this is very much the starting passage, this rocket, this is where your story will launch from. And if you double click it, you will find that there is this, uh, uh, the very first thing that you should do is give your 
passage, passage so every uh, everything in Twine is contained within a passage, a title. So we're going to make that first choice. Um, and um, one of the nice things about Twine is if you actually, if you remove the text over here, you get a little tutorial. For example, on how to make bold text and italic text, or in fact, how to make linkages to other passages. And that's the thing that we're going to be doing first. So you uh, oops, want to learn Twine. So there's two options here. Yes. Or the other one is no. Nah. Oops. Uh, uh, not really. So the way that I make these options is using double brackets. I make these options into things that you can actually click using double brackets. I'm going to briefly show that by removing these double brackets over here. So suppose that I now get out of this passage, which I'll do right now by simply pressing the X button, the close button. You'll see that it has linked directly to this passage over here. So what this will look like now is something like this. And I have to briefly check if this is actually, yes, that is turning up on your video as well. So you want to learn Twine. This one with double brackets is now clickable. It will lead us to a passage that is currently empty. This one isn't. So let's work with that by, once again, double brackets at the start and at the end of it. Choice, player choice, boom. Really, this is all you need to know to start doing f fun stuff with Twine. <clears throat> There's a bit of other things to know. For example, one of the things that I always think is very useful that uh, you also are able to use some other words to link to certain passages because you may want to link back to a passage and you have, would otherwise have to use that those exact words, but you don't necessarily want that. So, okay, in that case, let's start. And you can go to that let's start uh, passage by saying passage two. There we go. Let's start. Arrow two, passage two. Sorry, oops, there we go, passage two. Or you can always go back to the start. Now we've already said that the very first starting passage is in fact, um, Oops, let me actually get rid of this. The very first starting passage is um, this called first choice. So what we want to do right here, just as we did above, we want to put in an arrow and say first choice. Actually, Twine is very helpful. It, this pops up straight away. So, so what that will look like in Twine is something like this. Um, yeah, I think this should work. Yeah, exactly. There's two double arrows back and forth here. So if we start over here, you want to learn Twine? Yes. In that case, let's start. This passage that we haven't really done anything with, you can always nicely go back in Twine with these arrows as a player. Uh, or we can always go back to the start. Boom. And we're back in the start. So this is more or less really all you need to make Twines. So suppose we have a player that doesn't want to run a play along. Um, there's some other things that you can do with Twine. So we have a player who's going to click, nah, not really, I don't want to really learn anything about this. We're going to trick them basically into participating in this little uh, game of Twine making uh, anyway. So um, in the passage, no, nah, not really, you can do, for example, the following. You can say, click me. This thing that sort of tells the player like, hey, you may really want to click me, even if you're not really interested, like a little bit like Alice in Wonderlands and eat me, right? So what you can do is you can use a little thing called a macro. This is something that sort of extends the functionality of the basic Twine script into all sorts of things that you can, can think of, from RPGs to inventories or to, in this case, doing a little bit of a text trick uh, for the player. So we're using this macro click and the text that appears before it called, that is, click me. We are going to say, you've clicked me. Now you still have to do this, uh, do this thing. Doesn't really matter. And we're going to use that actually to say, 
There we go. We're going to use it to go to, what's the name of the passage again? Yes, it was yes. There we go. To yes. Boom. All right. What this will do is uh, the following. I have to have one extra bracket here. Is. You've now seen that we've created a link also with the yes passage. We start here. So we've got a player that doesn't want to play. By the way, it's, this is an easy box to keep your mind, uh, mind on. If you think there's errors in there, this will tell you, basically. So, um, no, not really. Hmm. All right, passage, no, not really. Oh, I should actually change that. Uh, that's not uh, That's not correct. That's the passage, no, not really. Um, here, I just have one thing saying, click me. Oh, you've clicked me. Now you still have to do this thing. This player clicked it anyway and are now back at the start of this little twine tutorial so there's a whole twine tutorial that i made out there um, for your reference that you can actually play through and learn about twine yourself i will link it in the video as well as uh, on uh, on the uh, the context of this course um, what i wanted to put out there is that there's this whole document called a reference document for harlow so harlow is a format that is, there's different formats that you can use with Twine, a storytelling format, and Harlow is probably the most used one, and it's really one of the most, I would say, beginner-friendly. It has some certain downsides that you will get to if you're really getting into Twine, for example, with images, etc. but otherwise it's really good. And it has this long list of all of these things, all these macros. So click is just one of these, right? Click is, let's see, where is click? Click is over here. Um, it's just one of these that um, that you can do. So check out the reference document if you're interested in trying to do some very specific things. I would first say, let's try uh, your first twine with just basic, basic functions, but try if you can already play around with some macros. This is now being made a lot easier because you first used uh, to uh, have to basically use a lot of your macros, have to know a lot of these macros by heart, but now you can actually for example, over here, work with these macros uh, yourself in Twine's uh, uh, editor, in Twine's game engine straight up. So that's really a lot of use. But it's still good to read through this because, uh, or through the Harlow reference text, because there's a lot of complex concepts, programming concepts, in fact, that you have to get your wrap your head around. But once you do, there's really no place you can't go in the past present or future when it comes to twine.